What can you say? I can't remember. We had too many beers. <laughs> it's been overwhelming, I would say. Yeah. Far better than anyone, you know, expected in the first place. Better than anyone we, anybody did. Well, you we, don't have yeah. a lot of sold-out shows. Okay. Yeah, that too. But also, we have a very nice. Uh, I mean, it's really it's a lot of energy on stage again. I mean, after the break, you know, we're back. We have a good album, and we're having fun on stage. You know, mm -hmm. everyone is really. Uh, working hard, really hard. Yeah, yeah. And it's also with the addition of Stefan on, uh, on bass, he gives uh, another dimension, because uh, Frederick is more stationary, uh, more, uh, stands more still and plays his stuff when close to the drums, uh, whereas Stefan is all over the place the whole time. I think we're encouraging each other on yeah, stage. Yeah, it, it, like, oh shit, he's moving around, I have to do the, <laughs> no, that too. So as so, you mentioned Stefan, how did it come to pass that he replaced Frederick on this tour. Yes, I did. Yeah, well, Frederick is uh, on, on uh, so-called paternity leave. Yeah. He had a second child and in November, December-ish. And uh, we needed to have, you know, a replacement for Frederick for this tour and also South America. And, and we thought it was would be a really cool idea and like a you know, big bonus for the fans to have Stefan just coming in and, you know, being the, stuff, the sub for, for Frederick on this tour. And, uh, at first, we didn't really know, you know, what he would answer right. if we, you know, asked him the question because he's a pilot and he has, you know, he has a job and he's a guitar player and the guitar players yeah. don't always want to go down to play the bass because that's what it feels like a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, he's used to going down. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I think yeah. he, he jumped at the chance. Apparently. Uh, yes, because we did a couple of shows. Last yeah. summer at a right. festival, at like Bakken, he was like a special guest for a couple of songs, and he—you uh, could really tell that he—he uh, he misses us. Yes, he misses us. Yeah. And he officially left in spring of 2008. So how does it feel now to have him back on tour and everything? It feels like he never left. Yeah. We miss the little yes. bastard. No, but <laughs> now it, it, it does actually not feel, it feels like he never left because he is always the one, we always kept in touch with him. We, he comes to the recording sometimes and just say hi, hello and hang out. We're still like friends. Uh, the, him not being in Hammerfall did not mean that we, we're not still friends and not see each other. Uh, so it's quite natural you know, to have him back. He, he doesn't change a bit in, <laughs> in all those years. No, so it's, it's really cool. Yeah. But how then? How did the things change back when he left and when Pontus well. came? Oh, <laughs> I don't know really. It's uh, what? I mean, it, it's been you know, it's seven years now since Pontus joined, and I mean back then we just uh, also got new, you know, Frederick took over yeah. when, when Magnus left. So it was a lot of change you now happening at the same time. And of course, they really affected the, the output of the band on stage because Pontus is not Stefan and Frederick is not Magnus. So, of course, it was a lot of, you know, it was a drastic change, I would say. What happened now was that the band went from being very energetic and, and, and um, uh, a lot of output on stage, but didn't sound that good. Uh, it, the, the whole, it wasn't kept together as much. When Pontus and Frederick joined the band, I think we sounded really good live. Uh, much, much better than we ever had before. But there wasn't that output uh, energy. We sounded better, not good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but now I think this combination turned out, we didn't know this, but it turned out to be the, a comp combination of both. It sounds fucking awesome now. I think we have never sounded anywhere close to as good as we do now. And it, all, it also is a, a very energetic band. It feels like we're they young again. Stefan and David <coughs> on the drums. Yes. They kind of they 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 are like an in, in very 
positive uh, injection. injection. And we, I think we needed that. Definitely. And so now, right now in this store, there are even more changes. So how does it affect the uh, performance live? Besides the fact that Stefan moves That's more up for you to, uh, stay. Yeah. to see tomorrow, and, I think, and see the show. Okay, but it what feels about much better. Yeah, now. it feels. It, we're definitely. We, we did have, did have fun before too, but now it, it is much more laughter on stage. Like much more joking around, it feels really good. We're having fun, and that's the most important thing. <coughs> Enjoying our time on stage, and you know, really, <laughs> not really as, you know, of course, the break helped out a lot also, because then you, yeah. it, you know, all, all the stuff comes back from the past. You know, th th that feeling like ah, you, you really want to go on stage again, because when you know, Joachim and Oscar and the, the other guys have been going for 15 years, eighteen. Yeah, yeah, but before the break. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah right. before the break. And I, I've been in other bands and it's been just going and going and you do the same thing and after a while you get, you know, stuck in the loop. Just, you just doing it. And I think the break made, made the band, you know, sort of wake up again. Like, mm. when you come back, we're doing our fresh ears, yeah. fresh mind, writing a new album, you know, recording a really good album, I would say. And that really, you know, mm -hmm. boosts everything. Mm -hmm. it felt also like you can tell that from the fans' uh, point of view that they really appreciate the new album. Yeah. So yeah, the feedback on this, on this tour and uh, the feedback from the new album really shows in the fact that there are so many sold out shows and in the fact that so many, I mean, sold out albums and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but did you really expect this? After the break. <laughs> no, I, I think that's that we're old enough not to expect anything. <laughs> yeah. We just hope. We're living on a hope, you know. <laughs> we'll some hope. Well, that was what we were talking about before, and, and also with like we have a, an album that we believe really well a, a, a lot in, and that turned out to be something that the fans wanted because there was a lot of chart positions and all that, and it sold really well. But then we were going to go on tour without two members. That was. Uh, on, on the album, and that felt a little bit scary because you didn't know what they were, what, what people would expect from you. But um, when uh, I, I think with the addition of Stefan was perfect because he sort of united the old lineup a little bit, or, or at least had some ties to that. Uh, pe people hadn't seen him for uh, many years uh, because he hasn't been playing so much, and I, uh, that was very helpful in. Uh, Creating a, a, like a buzz for for this, and of course uh, he gets to play a little bit of guitar too, which helps, I guess. But but uh, the overall the whole whole um, uh, thing was we didn't know what to expect because there were so many things that were different from the last time, and also different from the album recording. So it, it that's why it's such a great relief that it turned out so well for both for us as well. I mean, on stage would feel really good, but also. A lot of people want to see this show. Well, uh, this album does look back to the past in many ways, although it's not really, a, as some of you mentioned before, it's not really the glory to the brave too, but it is uh, something that really refers to the past a lot. First of all, uh, the album artist, uh, Jas Marshall, uh, then the producer, uh, the cover, which has Renegade Force and Castle and everything. And uh, even Stefan, which wasn't planned when <laughs> right. the, the album was planned, everything looks back to the past. I like the album before, I like Infected, uh, which was uh, sort of more progressive in a way that, well, some people liked, some didn't. And uh, it also had a lot of changes on it, but in a different direction. Well, all of that led to that break, and I believe that the reason for this sort of referring to the, your past works and everything uh, had a lot to do with uh, the book you wrote. My well, for me personally, it definitely did, because I went through the whole career really uh, uh, extensively for yeah. everything, and I relived it a lot with. Uh, you know, talking to people. I interview Stefan every week almost for a while. Well, this has been asked for a couple of times already, but since the book is only available in Swedish, what can you tell us about? You can read it out loud for you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's a book about I, actually it's it is a book about my life. But since my life has been eighty percent Hammerfall, it's eighty percent of the book is about Hammerfall and the, all the career ups and downs and the things that has happened to us along the way. And it's a pretty. I mean, we did have a pretty. Uh, interesting, uh, a lot of things have happened that people might not know about them or maybe have forgotten about uh, that happened during tours in, in uh, uh, about ten, 10 years ago. So it's, I, I, I go into detail about everything that happened to him for more or less over the years. Yeah, of course, but what led you to write that book and was it hard? Uh, did you expect uh, the feedback that you got for the book or did you expect more um, or less? <laughs> I, it was hard work for sure, but it wasn't very difficult to write it. It just took a long time because there were so many things I wanted to put in there. Uh, and why it happened was because the, somebody asked me to do it. Uh, a, a, a publisher was actually asking a friend of mine to, do, to write a book about Hammerfall, but he didn't have time to do it. And I said, I, I can do it. Uh, so I would always envision uh, or fantasize about writing a biography of my life. How, how would that be? Uh, so now I finally got the chance. I'm very happy about that. And how did you feel while looking back for everything? While well, that was the key to to getting excited for the new album because I listened to all of the albums when I wrote about the recordings and the tours. I listened through them like really carefully and, and, and just you know relived that as well and remembered things about the songwriting that I hadn't thought about in 10, 15 years or whatever. So it was really interesting in that, that respect, and I think that that gave me a, a boost. So I, I also had um, uh, I, I kept myself from playing guitar until I finished the book because I wanted to make do one creative thing at a time. And the book took about six or seven months. And at the end of this period, I was really like, I want to play guitar. I want to write songs. I was really feeling the energy for it. But I uh, held held off until it was actually finished. I fin uh, uh, sent them the final draft in. And then I just started writing songs and it went really quickly. So the first one was uh, We Won't Back Down. I think that took. Well, actually, I, I think I wrote We Won't Back Down and X in Ferris in one week. And then one, I sent it off to Joachim for, for the vocals, of course. But, but from my, my side, it, it was really uh, it was a kick in the ass that I really needed. So I, actually, for me, I didn't really take a break from Hammerfall <coughs> as much as, as taking a break from playing uh, with Hammerfall. But it was, I, I really enjoyed it. But even though you take a break, you never take a break mentally, because you're always planning things. You're thinking, okay, what's gonna happen in two years when, we, you know, when we're back in the studio, when it's time for the new album? Okay, what will the tour look like? Will we even you know, have, have the fans left? Any fans left? You never know. Mm -hmm. So even though you take a break, you're thinking about it the whole time. And these are things you can't really control either. I mean, we did take a break, and in this climate of, of like instant fame, it's gone like this as well. I mean, we have a, a much more solid foundation, but you never know if people lose interest and they find something else that they want to be interested in. Uh, this is so much more than just a job. I mean, this is mm. part of our lives. Yeah. It's been, you know, our lives for over 18 years. Mm. So. Well, honestly, I think that if, I mean, it's a part of your life and it's also, if somebody really, really loves the band, it really gets becomes a part of fans' life as well, so it's hard that's so to weird. It's actually thinking like that, like shit. Weird that we have affected so many people in a way. I mean, you're sitting here, and apparently you like what we're doing <laughs> somehow. I don't know why. So how does it feel? You obviously, or at least I believe that all of you, or most of you, are well, pretty much living your dream right now because Hammerfall exists for nearly. 20 years, and it's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> how does it feel? Uh, how did that feeling of having a band that is getting more and more popular change uh, from the beginning, from Glory to the Brave, and the first shows, small shows, I believe, club shows or something, all up until today? I mean, the beginning of the band, I mean, when you released Glory to the Brave and Legacy of Kings, you were doing all this trial and error because you, you didn't know what it was like being on tour. So back then, everything was new. You came to a new city every day, a new club, a new promoter. And now, we played like a, a, a show in Switzerland at Z7 in Pratton, 
for like the 16th, 17th yeah, time. Yeah, something like that. So he's like, oh, we're here again. Okay, mm -hmm. hey, how are you doing? Let's do, <laughs> let's do a show. And I also think that, at least for me now, I'm trying to have more, of course this is serious. What we do on stage is very, very serious because for some people, this is the, the, maybe the first and the only time they will see Hammond alive. But I also try to go up on stage and have fun myself and not take it so, so serious. It's not dead serious anymore. Maybe in the, in the beginning it was more dead serious. You know, you know it's Hammerfall yeah, and right. we stand proud and strong and we do this, you know, whoa, it's our way or the fucking highway. <laughs> no, it's not that important anymore because, you know, life changes, you know, things change. You get, your, you get a family and, you know. You gotta have a distance to your, yourself. Uh, in your, your stage persona, so to speak. I mean, it, it is about having fun on stage and joking around. I mean, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to, uh, we don't, we're not uh, dismissing the music just because we're doing other things that are fun. And this is something that I think we had a difficult time separating, like Joachim said back then. It was really serious and if somebody said something, it was uh, uh, like uh, there was a joke, we couldn't take that joke. Well, the, I, I know I was like this anyway uh, for many years, but it, but it's not the same. <laughs> but I was also going to say um, that when we, we released Glory to the Brave and started touring and, and all that stuff happened, uh, it took m at least me uh, several years before I landed, so to speak. I understood what we were actually doing. Uh, it took me a long, long time to understand that this is a unique situation that we're in now. This doesn't happen to everybody. Mm. We went from nothing to, to uh, one of the best-selling bands on the label in like, a month or something. And, and then, of course, everything started rolling after that. Fine, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> but it was a surreal experience, because even though we had been working towards this goal somehow in the back of our heads all the time, no, I don't think, at least I didn't, I, I never thought it would happen, you know? Because this is, like I said, once in a lifetime thing. So we were extremely fortunate to have a great album at the, a great time, uh, getting great promotion from the label, uh, which was uh, uh, which created this whole thing. But then I think if we wouldn't have had this uh, uh, passion for it, the, the things that we were actually doing, we did, didn't do it just because we wanted to be famous or anything. We did it because we had a lifelong passion for heavy metal music. And that gave us a great foundation to build on for the next album. It wasn't just a one album that, oh shit, this worked. Oh, but what are we going to do now? We had uh, a strategy, like, well, not a strategy, but we had, in our minds, we knew what we wanted to accomplish musically. You know? and, and of course, that put a lot of pressure on, it, on us too, that sometimes you didn't really enjoy the ride because you're thinking too much, okay, what's the next step? Oh, we need to write songs now. Oh, I need to, you know, go into the studio and deliver the best vocal performance ever. Like, Ah, and that really caused a lot of you know, a conflict, conflict within me that I could really enjoy myself. Now I'm trying to, okay, this is not the end. If, you know, if this doesn't work, okay, that's it. I can only do my best. And now I'm, I'm trying at least to, to enjoy the ride a little more. You, you know, if you go to South America, for instance, in, in the past, you, I sat at the hotel, I didn't you know, do anything, because, oh, there's a show tomorrow, I need to you know, save the voice and do this and that. And, at least now I can have a couple of beers and maybe go to the Zoom and then do the show and see something. Yeah, of course. But maybe if you didn't take it as seriously before, maybe you wouldn't have been here. I still take it very, it, you know, seriously. Yeah, but yeah of I also course. try to you know, find a, a good balance. But you worked really, really hard back then and it meant to you so much. But what do you think many people dream about what you accomplished? What do you think, where would you be if you were a little less lucky and if you never got this far? Where a would little you less be? talented, I would not say. <laughs> <laughs> not only, not only uh, where would Hammerfall be? If there wasn't any perspective with Hammerfall, what would you do, each of you? What do you think? What would you do? Probably playing with me. some other band. Yeah, some other band. Yeah. Oh, yeah, with but if, 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 so, sort of, it's like... Um, you're so fortunate that you can do what you love and, you know, make a living out of it. it and the, the whole thing with, like, being in Hammerfall, when I joined Hammerfall, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big 
you know, product that, you know, from the beginning was two young guys writing songs and it grows and it becomes very, very big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you still young? Yes. yes. No, but 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 the the whole I came on the ride later after Stefan left and when I, I still see every day like wow I can do this it's amazing I can play guitar I can you know make people happy playing the instrument I love the music I love and and do do that and I think I think you have to be quite thankful for it, that it works. Well, back then, you know, when we got the, the first deal, I was working in a record store, and that was my dream job, to work with music, not in the music business, but, you know, selling, back then it was CDs still, and uh, I, I loved my job, that was the best job I ever had. I didn't make any money, but it didn't really matter, because I had a big passion for, you know, music. Uh, so I would probably, you know, still, but there are no CD stores left in Sweden now, but <laughs> I would probably, you know, stay there for another 10 years and, you know, maybe I would, I don't know, work in, you know, with Volvo, mm -hmm. uh, assembling cars or something, I don't know. You're too uh, driven to do that. I think you would have, you wouldn't have settled with something that you didn't want to do. No, but maybe I found something else, another passion. Maybe, you know, pick up the, the cooking passion. Something yeah, like that. I wanted to mention that. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But I was so really satisfied with the job I had at the record store. So it didn't really matter that I only survived two weeks and then I had to, you know, drink water and eat, you know, old bread for two weeks. That was my life back then. <laughs> dry, I had dry I hair. Care, so, you know, <coughs> that was my passion. That was I was living that dream at that time. And what do you think? Where would you be? Probably teacher, because uh, that's what I was doing at the moment when, when uh, Hammerfall sort of started working, uh, when we got the record deal. I was uh, working towards a history, maybe English teacher or something like that. And I'm kind of glad I didn't end up, I mean, it, it's the teaching uh, business nowadays is not so fun uh, for various reasons, not for Ah, never mind, fuck that. <laughs> Edit that shit out. It doesn't matter. That's probably what I would do. That's the only thing she will keep. <laughs> <laughs> well, looking back at the past, some more. Um, for you, mm -hmm. when you came to the band, mm -hmm. how did, uh, what kind of change was it for you uh, in uh, comparison to what you did before and to the bands you played in before, uh, in the atmosphere and also in the playing itself? Uh, I, I think uh, the change, I've, I've been playing, you know, more or less full time since 1990. So it's a long time, but it's been in different bands, in different situations and stuff. And when, when I ended up, when Joachim called me and asked me if I knew any guitar players in Stockholm, <laughs> I said, me. Mm -hmm. And then I, did, I didn't want to ask him directly because he was in a band and they were all, you know, close friends of ours. So I didn't want to, you know, steal him from the poodles. So I just called him and said, Ponte, do you know any, any good guitar player that might work for Hammerfall? Yeah, me. He said, oh, good. I didn't want to ask you myself. Yeah, you toured with poodles. Yeah. Yes. So, sorry. Yeah, yeah, just the year before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but um, I, th I think, uh, you know, com coming into Hammerfall, for, for me, it wasn't that much different, you know, in, with the playing, because I've always, uh, th that was the fun thing when we toured together, when I played in Budapest, we were all, all, Oscar and me, we were talking about Accept, because we both love Accept, and Joachim and I were talking, like, cooking food and stuff, you know, everything, we had so much things common, and I knew also Anders, <coughs> you got it, thank you, no, it's here, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I knew Anders from, way back with Ingmar Malmsteen and everything. So it was sort of, it was a different thing coming into the band because all bands work differently. But I think I found my place quite fast and it, you know, everything was easy. Just, I, I came in and flew the first show after I joined the band was flying to what? Canada. What a horrible show. Yeah. Uh, oh. And doing Why? one show and yeah. nothing oh, worked. No, we played 25 minutes, and we're in Canada for four days. Something like that. Yeah, and 
a long trip and an interesting show and then come back and we started to record more or less. Yeah, yes. we started recording in the, uh, in the autumn of uh, 2008. Okay, yes. So I came into... Because that's also was the new era of Old Hammer for like, mm. you know, take three or take two or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Since both you and Frederick play on, on that album. Yeah. You're new on that album. Brand new. Well, now I'm interested about that show in Canada. <laughs> I mean, it was just nothing worked. We came up there on stage, we had a big festival. We had 45 minutes or something at first, but they cut it down. Yeah, but it was so delayed. Yeah, and everything. And then all of a sudden, the intro, someone you know, started the intro, like, shit. And Andrew started to play, and the only thing in the PA, and there was a lot of people, I think Iron Maiden was headlining yeah, yeah, this yeah, festival. Yes. It was a snare drum and vocals. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, we should have stayed home. Yeah. <laughs> Disaster. Yeah. And have you had any in, in particularly interesting experiences on this tour so far? Anything memorable, anything that you wish to share? On, on this tour? I mean, maybe not so many funny things, I yeah. guess, but I mean, we've done some sightseeing, you know, you know exploring some cities. And uh, I'm just amazed that so many people you know, have shown up at the shows. That we can say that we already have 10 sold out shows out of you know, 20, 25. 25. Mm. It's almost yeah. half sold out. It's, it's yeah. beyond belief. Yeah, it's fantastic. The whole, you know, it's a great atmosphere. We have a fantastic crew. Yeah. We have two really good support bands that are adding something to this tour. And uh, there, are no, there are no, you know, divas on this tour. We're in this working in, you know, in the same direction. They're working in my direction, of course. Mm. They, they, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> now that's uh, something that was different on the last tour too. We did, there was a terrible environment to be in because the, the crew was just, they weren't working uh, together at all. Was, they were bigger rock stars than yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so we only kept one guy from that and he's the best guy that we've ever had, I think. So Even though he's French. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but we love him anyway. Yeah. No, but seriously, it was a, a bad atmosphere, and that and that created a bad mood uh, for the tour. This is a great atmosphere, and this this creates a great mood for the tour. Everybody's working together, pulling together to get the show going as best, best as they can, instead of protecting their territory all the time, uh, which was happened on the last tour. So we, uh, this this crew that we have now is the best we've ever had. Well, of course, in tour there are many people. The crew, the sport bands, the headliner, everything. So there, everything can't be perfect, but uh, how do you, five members of the band, manage to always, for years, uh, somehow always stay, at least it looks as if it's very interesting to you, and as if you're having a great time always together, but is it really always On stage, I mean, you, it doesn't matter if you just walk around like a zombie the whole day, you know, so bored, you just want to kill yourself, go home, because nothing happens. But the moment the intro goes, you know, then it's like you, you get a, a, adrenaline, a, a rush. adrenaline rush, and it boosts you. You come out on stage, and the people are screaming, they're singing along in the first song, and you stand up. They're like, wow, this is the best day of my life so far, because it gives you something. But, but then we, we also sort of professionals of having our privacy, even if we're all five together all the time. We're locked into the dressing room. We, you know, we, if you've been doing it for a long Someone's time, you find your spots. Yeah. You find, you know, you have you your... You respect each other. Yeah, exactly. So that, it, it works fine. I we have our nap times. In the yes. <laughs> Some naps then more than others. <laughs> <laughs> no, just once every after dinner. Yeah. And sometimes before dinner. Only when I was sick. <laughs> That's the only, only reason I actually did it. Yes. Well, so this is uh, the interview for the fan club, so there are a couple of questions, of course, related to the fans. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you mentioned a couple of times that the fan bases or the fans in general in different cities or in different countries or even continents uh, differ in the way in which they are uh, acting on the shows and which they are um, uh, creating the atmosphere and everything. So. Uh, what are the differences between, for example, uh, the European um, crews, that is, 
audiences and uh, Latin American and maybe uh, North American and which atmosphere if this question if you wish to answer this question which atmosphere do you prefer well, it's, it's, it's so different but still it's it doesn't really matter if you're you know having a show in Gothenburg Sweden or if you're in, in Spain or in, in, in Brazil it's I would say that, that the fans are a little more passionate in, in southern Europe and in, in South and Latin America but still I've, I've been blown away on this tour by the fans in France in, in Germany for instance it's like they're also very passionate they it all has to do with it, why they're there if, if you go to a show just to mm -hmm. I'm gonna check this out see what's going on uh, then it it's very difficult then they become difficult for you because then they're just standing there staring at you when you want them to to get into the show but on this tour <coughs> there's been I, I, I would say 95 percent of the audience at almost every show at least 95 percent has been there to have a good time together with the band on stage which is, which is how I think a heavy metal show should be uh, uh, it seems to be a whole you know, brand new generation of fans yeah. also yeah. younger they're really there to learn how to behave and yeah they're, they don't really know all the songs but they it doesn't matter they no. want to have a good time it's so important it gives us a lot of energy to yeah, feel from us as well it it so. it's, it's really thank you guys and also then it's up to us if, if if it's like a Monday or a Tuesday show, it's a little bit tougher, but then we need to work harder. No. Of course. Get a start rolling it. Oh. Yeah. Speaking of younger fans who come there to have a great time, uh, you've been playing, as mentioned, for quite a long time. So, uh, have you been able to keep track in any way of uh, how many people are there uh, following your work from the, more or less from the beginning? It's no, impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. You see some people in, in, in the crowd like, okay, that guy I saw the first time 18 years ago. Yeah. He's a bit older now, but I rem remember him. But I think it's uh, a lot of the fans, they are the same age as we are. And they were the same age, of course, when we, we started with Road to the Brave. Now they have families, they have kids. Maybe they can't really go to the sh every show they want to see. But they're probably going to come back. When the kids are getting older, just like we are, you know, we have you know older kids now. We can do things. They can, you know, manage to stay home a couple of hours on their own. If we just want to go to the theater or to to a show, you know, back home, then it's harder for a guy like Oscar with an infant. Like mm. he can't really, you know. And now I stay home with the family. Now I think there it works the same way. So maybe in five, ten years we're gonna have a, you know. A new generation with the kids? Yeah, but because they're going to return. The, the old fans are going to return to Hammerfall. Yeah. And we, we have this new generation of fans who's going to be bigger, hopefully. Yeah, but of course, those old fans won't behave the way they used to. Like no, they will probably get even something. more drunk in their <laughs> <laughs> We saw that yesterday. People yeah. that could barely stand up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't sleep. <laughs> you know, the like yeah. <laughs> 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 that happens. But they're okay. one night out. They yeah. yeah, they go all in. <laughs> but there's a general atmosphere and shows somehow changed from uh, 18 years ago and up to now. Besides the fact that those are not definitely not the same people. The, the reception of the fans. Uh, it's changed quite a few times if you look at the, how, what the audience are, are based on. In the beginning, there was a lot of people uh, in our age. Okay, then we were 25, 27, whatever. But 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 there was this age and up uh, for a couple of years, mostly. But then, I, I guess the in the beginning of the new millennia, uh, we had a, a huge influx of, of uh, teenagers uh, that okay, they, they grew older with the band. And I would say, last tour, for example, there were a lot of people who were older uh, again. And now I think it's starting to turn back into uh, a lot of young people again, which is, I, I, I like it much more. Well, of course you like it, because that's f for the future, you know. You don't want to uh, be stuck. You have, in order to be uh, successful, in, or, in order to be able to do this for a long time, we need fans that, that are actually with us and not just dying out, so to speak. Uh, so it's, it's very nice to see the teenagers getting into it. Plus, yeah. we know what it's like to get into heavy metal when you're a teenager. It's and for the teenagers, we're more than just Hotron Fire. Yeah. 
because they don't really know the lyrics to it. Mm. I always know at the end of the show, you know, okay, now you sing for me. Mm. And like, yeah. okay, they don't really know it's the lyrics. It's pretty terrible. Okay. Okay. Well, actually. maybe I should help, you know. <laughs> uh, because the, the older fans, they know Heart on Fire. Yeah. Like on the, on the last tour and the tour before that, mm. at that song, everyone was singing along. Mm. But now it's just like, Mm. There's, There's one or two mind. that know it, but yeah. like, I, I, but they try in and anyway. They're yeah. like, yeah. Ah, that's all that matters. Yeah, exactly. But besides Hearts on Fire, which song do you think is the most wanted and the most popular one among the I think people yeah. really they are so happy when we announce announce Glory to the Brave. Mm -hmm. But also, they yeah. people are happy the whole from, from song one. If you look at receptions. For, from the audience, one song that always gets a really good, because we never announce it, we just start playing it, and it's got a very specific... I know, I know. Yeah. Last Man Standing. No. Shit, I didn't know. Oh, that one too, but I, I was, to I'm talking about Any Means Necessary. Yeah. Because yes. that song always gets the people going, and it's it's great. It's, that's the best feeling, you because I, you know, you've been down in the audience yourself many, many, many times when you were younger. Like when they start a song, you say, "Yeah, now it's this one. I love this song. Whatever song it is, doesn't matter." But you can see the reaction in the in their uh, the faces in their eyes, uh, and that's a, a really good feeling that gives you a lot of energy as well on stage. And I have to, I have to <clears throat> add on that Bushido also now, even if it's on the new album, it's like, yeah. wow, it's almost the same feeling. You can see people like, yes, yeah. it's yeah, again, it's it cool. gives a great reception yeah. too. It's fun. Well, not on uh, my part on stage. No, no, no. Okay. Standing right uh, the way people. you're standing, everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. They are. Oh, no. No, no, no not that song. <laughs> uh, well, is there any song that you prefer and really like to play live and song that is really dear to you? Especially when it comes to. I love to play Let the Hammer Fall. Mm -hmm. I always done that, I always say that because it, it's a fun song. And people know exactly what to do, even though if you're a newcomer, right. you know. Yeah, there were a couple of years I was I thought we could skip this song. We don't need it anymore. But now I turned around again. I, I, it's very fun to play. I guess. It's a good group. Yeah. And it, like Joachim said, people know what to do exactly. They, they're and they're getting really long part it. and it's yeah. It's it's really fun. And are there, are there some songs that you never played live? Of course, yeah, many. We have so many albums, so many songs. Yeah, of course, but if uh, if there are, there is an example of such song which you didn't play for some specific reason, what would that be? For example, if it was too hard to play live, or no, if we, it was. When we write songs, we always do it with the intention of that they, they were, will be able to be played live yeah. if we want to. Yes, but sometimes they are so high pitched. Like, <laughs> so I can't really sing it. Well, I can sing it, but not with another, you know, 17 songs following that song, you know. Well, speaking of high-pitched songs, uh, usually singers, as they get older, they, their voice really loses its power, but it seems to be quite the opposite with you. I'm How still do you young. Manage? I'm still young. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. I understand. Yeah. It's weird. I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I don't know. Well, I think everyone noticed it. It's really, I think, uh, as well as, Everything else, the vocals are yeah. better than ever in this. But song. maybe I always, I'm uh, very aware of what I'm doing. I, I try never to get too carried away. I, I don't party as hard as some other people do, and I try to. Uh, I, I really respect my, my instrument, and I try to, uh, to to preserve it and to to to, to handle it with care. And uh, speaking of vocals on this album, uh, did it have any effect? The fact that you. Uh, kept the producer from the previous album uh, for the vocals. I mean, we were, we were a great team in the studio, but at the end of the day, I am the one who has to sing. Yeah, of course. So, but he also knows what buttons to push, how to inspire me, and just being there with him now in Los Angeles, only you know, getting there, probably <coughs> boosted you know my performance instead of you know staying home and. I need to do the laundry, I need to cook today. Oh shit, I have a song to record. Uh, on to some late because the, 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 the subway is a strike. Uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> that's not so inspiring, is it? So, uh, let's get back to this uh, previous part of conversation where uh, I mentioned the break you took and I mentioned your book. Uh, now, 
you during this break you uh, recorded your solo album. Uh, I believe that since this is for the Hammerfall fan club, I believe it's not really to everyone's taste, but I think it's really great. Uh, how come? Where did that interest for that kind of music come from? And uh, where did the inspiration and the idea for recording that kind of album come from? To answer in a few words, you mean? Uh, I think I always had a passion for, uh, you know, uh, Swedish music, singer, singer songwriter music. I think I always wanted to do something in Swedish in a language that I kind of, you know, control, maybe not 100%, but 98% in comparison to English, which is of course limited to some, you know, to some extent, because I, 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 I can, you know, use it in a conversation, but I could never probably write something really, you know, deep, because there's a lot of words I don't know in English. And in Swedish, then, of course, I oh, it's easier to make it more <coughs> personal, to find it, you know, a depth because of the, the, the language. And uh, I had so many things inside of me that I, I really wanted to, to tell, I really, didn't really know how. So I thought this was a perfect way to, uh, to, to, to tell this story, this is a little more personal story, which I do on, on this album. And I thought this would be the perfect time to do it when we have a break. And even though I didn't know if anyone wanted to release the album or, or, or anything, I, I went into the studio, I did three songs. And I just made that an, like an investment, you know, to myself. That okay, let's do these three songs, and and it was also a way for me to to show that I was capable of uh, writing songs from from scratch by myself because I never, you know, trusted in in, in that part of myself. I always the way I'm working with Oscar is that I'm, you know he sends over, you know, with, with, the, with the riffs, the, the all the, the musical parts are there, and I. And I I'm adding my melodies, which I think is kind of unique in its own way, the way I write the melodies and so on, and then the lyrics. But now I kind of could uh, prove to myself that I was capable of more. That was very important. Well, yeah, this album really uh, shows that personal note. But since there are many people who would like to listen to it but don't understand, don't speak Swedish or something, is there anything that you could tell them about it and uh, any way in which you could recommend it. I think it's more of a, you know, a feeling when you listen to, uh, uh, when, if you li listen to Rammstein, for instance, you don't really understand exactly what they're talking about, but it, you know, it's based on emotions. And yeah, I think of course, if, if people are interested, they will probably, you know, translate it and maybe use something else than Google Translate to, you know, to, to sit there. But it's it kind of a, you know, a little darker side of, you know, of me and my life so far, and uh, I think it's, uh, I mean, just listen to it and, you know, try and get the emotions in there. And during the break, what have you been doing? Oh, everything. Now, I, I, I also work as a producer and a sound engineer, so I've been working with different artists with King Diamond, for example, and, yeah, producing a couple of albums and writing songs, I've written a lot of songs, so it's been, it's been just to do stuff that I wanted to do that I didn't have time to do, except like you're working with Oscar, you know, a book and an album, and I was doing other stuff that I like to do, so just to get the energy Yeah, back. I was hoping to, uh, I think we all were hoping to, have, you know, have a little bit of vacation too, yeah. I mean, but I never worked as hard as <laughs> <laughs> during the break. <laughs> I, I had a couple of True. couple of months exactly when we when we stopped. That a was couple a, of days. Yeah, but that was a break, you know, just empty the head from everything. But then you miss it, like a sailor, you know. You, you need to go back out somehow to do it. And yeah, I I toured a lot and we're in the studio a lot. I think we're all really hungry to go back on tour. Felt like yeah, I really want to go out, and I think that is the, the feeling that I've been missing for for many many years. Like oh no, it's another tour coming up, you know. But now I want to do the tour. Let's go out there and. Yeah. And I think that on this tour you really don't have a reason to be happy about it all because the result to be really great.
Uh, anyway, since there are so many solar shows, um, what are the are the numbers of fans? That is, sizes of the crowds varying from town to town too much. Yeah, of course. It's uh, like I mentioned yesterday. We played in in Bamberg in Germany. And that was the biggest show on the tour. Uh, 2,200 people something, and tomorrow it's a solar show here in Graz, but it's a 600 capacity, I think. So it's a big variation. Tomorrow is a club show, and yesterday was an arena, a small arena show. And what are the differences between such shows? And between uh, also, for example, playing at Wacken or something with uh, open stage, really you big You can't stage. compare anything no. to play at Wacken. It's so different. Uh, they have the, the audience is about 15 meters from the stage, so you, you can't, you don't have any connection. Yeah, and the actual the stage is bigger than the venues yeah. we play. Yeah, so. it's it's uh, Wacken is very unique in yeah. that respect. But it, it, it's the club shows are fun as hell because you you have this immediate contact with the audience. But it's not as much fun being on stage when you have to walk around people or, or worry that you're gonna smack bang somebody in the face with your guitar or something. Stand in line. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. So it's yeah. they both have uh, pros and cons like yeah. everything in life. And of course if it's it's too small and it's packed with people, there's no air in there mm -hmm. at the end. The oxygen is gone. And singing without actually, you know, being able to ca catch your breath once in a while, it drains you totally. Well uh there are a couple of questions that people have been asking. That people have been asking on the fan club on Facebook. Uh, well, I haven't picked all of them, but some of them. You answer. <laughs> you answer. Yes or no? Yes or no? <laughs> in, in any way you uh, wish. In any, in any, speak about it to an extent you wish. So. Uh, uh, Mikael asks. Uh, do you think that if the immortalized poster had been the album cover instead of infected, sales would be different? Yeah, I do. I think a lot of people uh, listen with their eyes instead of their ears. Uh, they decided. Yeah, they that this decided. Was, yeah, they for, don't like it. Yeah. It's, it's complete bullshit, of course, but I understand why they didn't like the album cover because it was fucking horrible, that black thing that we did. Yeah. It's a bad compromise that left everybody dissatisfied. Uh, but I, that's a good question. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> uh, I think that's still different. It's a very good album, and it's really, you know, truly a hammerful album, even though the cover sucked. If you listen to it, and I'm sure, I mean, if you are a huge fan of something, you will detect all these details and little changes of this day. This is new. This is new. Of course, there are some some attitude changes and, and some things that we haven't done before. But overall, it's it's 100 percent a hammerful album. It's not that different from. <clears throat> from No Sacrifice, No Victory, for example. No, but I don't think this album cover attracted any new listeners. Like, no. ah, I wonder what this is. Yeah, cool, cool cover. Yeah. Like, we, you know, did buy albums in the 80s by right. looking at the album cover, like, wow, cool, this this must be good. And you bought it. Because that's so basically so course, the only way you had of sampling the album was to go to a record store, put the needle on, and listen if they had that, uh, that uh, service. But not everybody did, so. Yeah. Yeah, to just browse and look at the covers and see what the song title is. Nice were. cover. Oh, great label. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. We could use that as yeah. a guide. Well, you know, of course, judging an album just by by the cover is is stupid, and the album is quite okay. But uh, people did miss Hector, and Hector now got his own Hector skin. So. Yeah. Well, he was in the booklet, but I yeah. guess people downloaded it and didn't look at the booklet or whatever. But. He never was gone anywhere. Yeah, it, was it was missing, actually. Yeah, well, I think. We, some, some weird things. Well, yeah. uh, can I say something and you, you promise you won't get offended? Depends. No. If, you, if you offend us? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We won't promise anything, but you can say, say whatever you like. I just wanted to say that uh, Hector in the booklet didn't really, in my opinion, look like himself. No, that's <laughs> honestly. But he was uh, half naked. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's sure, but he was still there. Yeah. He wasn't gone or, or anything. But anyway, fuck that. It, it does. It's not important. It's uh, the. the uh, I think the making infected was also very important for us to be able to make uh, revolution now. 
uh, it was a good step on the way. Because there's revolution is not without infected influences for sure. There are several in there, so I th that's why revolution is, is uh, such a great album in my opinion. Is it covers the whole career of Hammerfall. There's a lot of early stuff, a lot of mid uh, 2000 stuff, and a lot of newer stuff too. Because it, it, it it's a uh, retrospect basically. And the title <coughs> Revolution really fits in perfectly after Infected. Yeah. Uh, the page Hammerful Fans USA asked, uh, "You are rock stars, but you are also real people like the rest of us. How you, uh, how do you personally deal with uh, life ups and downs uh, so you don't get burned out, depressed, or wind up in a rehab like many rock stars?" Heavy metal. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, but it's we I can handle the alcohol we're from Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> so it's exactly. I think that's uh, it, it's if if you are if you uh, have problems with the substance abuse or whatever, you know, if you have a weak mind or weak will, uh, being in this environment and in a bad is incredibly difficult because you will uh, get caught up in alcoholism or drugs or whatever it is that you choose to do. But uh, if you have a strong mind and know what you want and know what you don't want, uh, it's very easy to say, oh, I'm not going to have another beer, I don't need it. I don't I mean, want we're it. just like everyone else, I would say. It, when it comes to you know depressions, whatever, it happens to to rock stars too. I think it happens more to rock stars than you know yeah. regular people. So. Uh, Eric asked, uh, "What are your feelings before, during, and after a concert?" Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, low. <laughs> the other way around. I'm, saying, I'm low before yeah. Yeah. the show, and then I get this you know uh, really adrenaline boost, and after the show, it's like you know. You're, you're, you're high on adrenaline. Wow, what a great show. Yeah, let's do something. It takes hours to get down from that. Because that is my drug. That's why I never drink before or during a show. I had a beer. I half a beer yesterday. Mm. Rehab. Let's <laughs> 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 I thought this was an interesting question. Uh, Dora asked, why don't you have more songs in Swedish? By more, she probably meant... Uh, more songs? Uh, there is this... Uh, Nevin 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 Although it's not really... Well, you said that cover. perfectly. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I told you all in Swedish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway... Um, that was really? a fun thing. That was just you know a, a cover song yeah. you were asked to do. Uh, for a, you know, doing it in Swedish is never has never been an option because I think it should be in English because you know it's heavy metal. It, that's the way you also want to do you know international. Yeah, of course. But have you ever thought about trying out maybe recording one song on some album? It or would be weird. I, I think. I mean, it might work. You never know. But it would be different, and it's very difficult. Uh, to, to create lyrics that sound strong and powerful in your native language, because it usually feels strange. Yeah. I mean, we did a song in, in Hungarian, because yeah. uh, the song was originally written in Hungarian. It might be cool to, dis, you know, to, to take a song and do, do it in four different languages. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, uh, and there is... Uh, Milos asked, uh, what album is dearest to you and which one left a great mark on you? All of them. But especially for me, Glory to the Grave, the first one, because that really, you know, changed my life and it changed your life and it didn't really change your life, but maybe afterwards, <laughs> years later. Yeah. Indirectly. Yeah. Yeah, indirectly. So that opened up all these doors that made this possible. Okay, so are there any sort of last words uh, directed to the fans or something? Perhaps you could say something in Hammer Speech, the language that the website for fan club is reading. <laughs> Come on, try it. Come on now. Oh, you look me in there. <laughs> <laughs> Let the hammer fall. Keep the flame burning. <laughs> It's, it's a really good job that what you're doing with this. It's a very interesting idea to do. I just looked at it a little bit uh, the first time. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> it was very difficult to read everything, especially since you, we made all the, the connections right away. But it's, it's a, a remarkable job.
But you also have the option. You can, you can right. yeah, uh, switch. So the, it's a lot of work there. And, uh, many really people don't really realize that there the is that option. So wonderful. Invest so much time in us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for, I don't know, everything, making great music and being great guys and everything. So, any message for the fans? Well, yeah. of course, I want to thank everyone for you know the first 20 shows in Europe and also in South America. It's been what a ride. This has been it's not over yet. No, and uh, thank you for the support for the first 18 years, and uh, hopefully we see here in a, another you know in 18 years from now. But can you believe it? 18 years. It's ridiculous, and a, a, a ridiculous amount of time to be able to do something like this. Imagine and how many beers. <laughs> yeah. Rehab. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now rehab is calling again. <laughs> but no, so anybody who, who when it doesn't matter what time they got into the music, but uh, if you've been with us for years, uh, we're very, very thankful for this, we, we the support. Stay. And we will never, ever change. Nope. Mark? Okay. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs>